Sure. First of all, appreciate you guys again giving us your time. Uh, continue to hate doing it this way, but uh, we want to be available and do whatever we can to, to help you guys do your job. So we appreciate you and your interest you have in our program. Um, you know, yesterday obviously was the first day we were able to be in pants um, pretty much for the first time since uh, Thanksgiving weekend of 2019. And uh, as you can expect, our guys were pretty excited about the opportunity uh, to go out and, and start to develop the callus uh, that will be needed uh, for us to, to play the game of football. And we eased into it. We started in what we consider shells, which are just shoulder pads. Uh, we weren't full gear just yet, but we were able to get into some of the thudding and the blocking and uh, thudding things that we need to, to start to do that we haven't had a chance to do, like I said, since uh, November a year ago. Uh, marked a big step in our progression as a team uh, and as a conference for us to play the game of football safely in 2020. Um, we're now on into our daily testing regim regimen uh, set forth by the Big Ten and our medical staff, and, and we're excited about the added safety and the things and protocols put in place to allow us to, to continue to move toward playing the game in a healthy and safe uh, manner. Um, we're looking forward to implementing what we've learned from our Zoom meetings, as I've talked about. You know, we've usually operated under the rules or the guise of what we're able to do. And we've had a lot of time to do the mental piece of it. And now uh, we get to do the physical piece. And, and the physical piece is going to be really important for a young team like ours to, like I say, develop the callousness necessary uh, because football is a physical sport, uh, running, blocking, tackling, and catching a football. And so now, Moving into the pads, it allows us to, to, to build and develop our team from, from that uh, point of view. Um, there's a lot of teaching moments that go into putting the pads on, how to thud properly, how to try to stay safe, uh, the way we have to practice to uh, continue a progression into having us playing at peak performance come October 24th in Chicago. And like I said before, I'm going to utilize the, the – the strength and conditioning staff and our sports science people to, to help us uh, continue to bring our team along at a rate that allows us to be uh, peaking at the right time. And, and since we had so much time ahead of us uh, before our first game, um, and, and with that, I'll open it up to any questions you guys may have. Thanks, Coach. We'll start with Dan. Daniel? Oh, hey, Coach Locks, appreciate you doing this. Um, we just got finished talking to um, Jay Sean, obviously, um, who missed last season with the torn ACL. Um, just what have you seen from him um, right, um, you know, leading up to pads? And, you know, how, how do you see him fitting in um, into your offense with, when we have a lot of other uh, talented receivers too? Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt that, you know, Jay Sean is one of those guys on our team that we feel um, brings uh, playmaking ability, big playmaking ability, as evident in the type of year he had his true freshman year. Uh, we were disappointed and obviously missed having that skill set last season with the ACL. And um, as you said, I've been very pleased and happy with the way he's come along um, with the ACL. We're still uh, going to be smart with him, but there's no doubt uh, the experience he had from playing as a freshman, as well as having been here for the install of the new system that we run has really benefited him because I haven't seen a, him miss a step or miss a beat per se. Uh, as a receiver, there's still some technical things and fundamental things that we want to continue to sharpen those tools for Jay Sean. And he's a willing learner, but there's no doubt having a healthy Jay Sean Jones is good for Maryland's offense. And uh, we're excited to have him back. We'll go to Emily. Hey, uh, first, just are there any injuries or, or opt out updates for anyone? Um, not anything different than what uh, I've discussed. Um, again, you know, we, we really are going to talk about the guys we have here. Um, from an injury standpoint, uh, most of the guys that missed last season are back uh, and some practicing in a limited uh, role. And we're going to do all we can to protect those guys that, that are coming back, the Jake Funks and the Chamis, uh, the Jay Sean Joneses of the world that missed last season. But um, uh, we have nothing to add with the opt-outs or opt-ins uh, since our last conversation. Um, and then I, I was I was just going to ask, as someone who's very familiar with the program's recent history at quarterback, um, 
how much do you think stability at that position, finding a guy, whether it be for this year or just for the years going forward, um, is how important is that to improving and taking the next step as, as a program? Well, I think uh, it starts with that position, especially for a team. Um, you have stability of a quarterback that's been in your system, that knows the system, that's familiar with the players on, on, the, on the field with them. Those things help. And, you know, we like I've said, we haven't had a franchise guy around here f- for a lot of years and, and not because we didn't have the talent in the room, but obviously with all the injuries that have happened here over the years to the quarterback room, and I've been here for quite a bit of them, um, it, there's been no stability or no uh, c- continuity at that position and not even an opportunity to develop a guy from freshman year on. So um, we feel good about the two guys in the room. Uh, that are on scholarship as well as the walk-on quarterbacks. You know, I'm really pleased with uh, David Faust and Eric Nigerian uh, and what those guys have brought to the table as well as walk-ons. And, um, you know, as we deal with COVID, uh, we've got to figure out ways to make sure we coach uh, number one all the way to 105 or 110 on our roster because you never know when those opportunities may make themselves available for all the players on your team. And so for us, you know, having a stable guy back there and some guys that have some continuity definitely helps. Next up, we'll go to Dave Ginsburg. Coach, uh, has it been difficult for you to uh, balance tackling and blocking along with keeping these guys safe from COVID? Uh, I cover Navy as well, and uh, Coach Ken over there had a very difficult time uh, stressing tackling, and it showed up in their opener. Uh, how's it been for you? I realize you just put on the pads, but uh, it's got to be a tough balance to make sure they're safe, but getting physical as well. Well, again, you know, I can only comment on what we do um, and the way we'll approach it. We've been in pads one day, so uh, from the day we got in pads, we started work on the physicality. Uh, we're fortunate with the way we test and our testing protocols that we have in place now that when we go to practice, we're going to practice on what we deem a clean field. So um, tackling, blocking, being in close quarters because of the protocols that we put in place, uh, nothing for us has changed other than I need, I want to be smart with how we progress uh, with having so much time or so little time, depending on how you look at it. Um, you know, we haven't hit or done anything physical since November a year ago. And so it's going to be really important for us we're going to tackle, we're going to block, we're going to play physical. Uh, we'll thud, and thudding to me is just tackling without taking a guy to the ground. And I'm a big believer that when you're a team that's really good at thudding, which you can front the ball up and wrap the ball carrier up, uh, and the tackling piece is easy because it's a lot harder to thud than it is to tackle. So um, from the day we put the pads on, we'll do the physical things we need to do to have our team ready to play, and, and we'll deal with COVID. Uh, you know, how we have normally done, but feel really comfortable doing things the way we normally would do it because of the protocols our medical people in the Big Ten have put in place. Next up, we'll go to Lila. Hey, Lila, how are you? Hey, Lila, how are you? Good. Um, You know, the wide receivers kind of mentioned the work that they were putting in this summer with the quarterbacks and just kind of trying to establish that chemistry and get to know each other. Um, how have you seen that translate onto the practice field? You know, I think that, that relationship is really important and uh, there's no way around it other than the time spent, you know, time on task per se, where they go out, they do the individual things on their own. And, you know, both quarterbacks or all of our quarterbacks have done a really good job, even throughout the pauses and the, the stoppages we've had throughout the summer of maintaining um, the, the balance and continuity of, of being and going wherever they could possibly go with the receivers and and doing the necessary things to create the timing. And and you see it paying some dividends in that, you know, when we stepped on the field after the pause, uh, we kind of pick right back up. And it's because, you know, our quarterbacks and our receivers and all the guys on the skill side of it have done a really good job of no matter what's happened program wise, whether it's a pause, they've done the individual things on their own um, at times, you know, to where I had to get on the Zoom and say, hey, you can't be out on this field. You can't, these fields are off limits. And, you know, these guys would go try to find grass or fields anywhere they could. And, you know, I thought our quarterbacks did a good job of uh, 
organizing those things and, and, and hopefully we'll see the dividends of it uh, the way as we continue to move forward. We'll go, to, we'll go to Charlotte McBride next. Hey there, Coach. Um, forgive me, this isn't exactly Maryland football related, but as you know, um, Washington Ravens playing this Sunday. I know you grew up in D.C. and it's not a traditional rivalry, but it matters to people in this area. It's bragging rights on the line. And, um, you know, as a college coach, I know you've been part of rivalries like Auburn, Alabama, when the teams are close in proximity. What does it feel like to be a part of it? What's it like for you maybe being a fan? And I got to ask, who are you taking this Sunday? Well, I'm a big Washington Raven fan. Um, that's the combination of the two. Um, good thing they're on the NFC and the AFC. I root for both of them. Um, looking for a great game, obviously. Um, in terms of the rivalry that comes along, I think, first of all, there's always that mutual respect um, because you know and hear so much about each other, uh, obviously, because you're being covered in the same uh, media area for the most part. And so I, I do know that the, there's always a mutual respect in, in those rivalry games. And uh, they're usually really hard fought. They're usually emotional. And, and what I've found is the quicker you can get the emotion out of it and get to the execution, um, that's how you handle rivalries. And I, I think both those teams are well coached. You know, Coach uh, you know, Rivera as well as Harbaugh both do tremendous job of how they prepare their team. So uh, I'm just looking forward to seeing a, a good game by my two favorite teams. Thanks so much, Coach. Yep. We'll go to Alex Flum next. Hey, Coach. How's it going? What's up, man? Um, where, where are you at in the decision process between Talia and Lance? And what have you seen from each of them individually um, that you've liked from them in the small sample size of, you know, you all being together in person? Yeah, I'm not even even have thought about uh, the quarterback, you know, situation in terms of who the starter will be because we're still in an install period. Uh, the evaluation period, we're three weeks away, approximately three weeks away from uh, – being able to go play uh, right now. And the goal is for us to get the situation things and our schemes intact and, and execute it. You know, it's one thing to do it in shirts and uh, shorts. It's another thing to do it in pads where the rush and everything's going on. So the evaluation, you know, obviously we evaluate every piece of what we do. Um, but I would say here in the next couple of weeks, as we continue to put them in situations, uh, we get into some scrimmage situations, which we'll try to get uh, – couple of scrimmages, two to three scrimmages in prior to our, our opening game um, that we'd be able to evaluate these guys live under fire uh, and see how they respond. But I can just tell both guys have done a tremendous job of taking the coaching, um, taking the system, uh, you know, Lance Lejeune from last year to this year exponentially looks so much more comfortable uh, in the pocket, winning in the pocket. Obviously, Talia is as advertised as a player. Uh, his ability to throw the football and get the ball out quick. And both guys offer athleticism at the position. So pleased with both of them, but not even close to even start that dialogue because we got so many uh, things to install and teach and get put in, but it will be an ongoing evaluation for us as we move closer to game time. We'll go to Dave Preston next. And we're unmuted. Uh, Coach, uh, good afternoon. Offensive lines are probably at their best when they're slow roasted. Uh, what are the challenges over the next three weeks as you have to kind of microwave together this unit uh, with fall practice? And I guess of the guys coming back, who, who can we expect big things from? Well, I think first and foremost, um, you know, it, it, it starts and ends up front, whether it's O-line and D-line. And we've been very fortunate that We've recruited some uh, junior college players that we feel can come in and play and help us. Um, we also signed a good amount of high school players to develop on the O-line. And so been really pleased, obviously, with the newcomers, the veteran newcomer guys, uh, the Jahari branches, uh, branches of the world, uh, along with Emilio Moran, our two guys that of the new ones that have junior college experience that I thought has re have really did a good job assimilating and, and, and buying into the culture that we've created and are two really good players. Um, you know, returning guys like Jalen Duncan and Spencer Anderson, who were thrown to the fire last year's red shirt freshman in the position. Um, as I've said before, uh, 
playing young players, especially up front, uh, the more game experience, the more experiences they add to what I call their toolboxes, the better they'll become. And I think we'll be better served at, with those two guys because of the amount of games and some of the trials and tribulations of playing as redshirt freshman last year. I would expect and continue to see both those guys uh, make tremendous improvement. Uh, you know, moving Marcus Minor inside has helped us as well as getting Johnny Jordan back. Um, two veteran guys that have played a lot of football around here for us as well. And then I've been really pleased the way Evan Gregory, who played a little limited role for us last year, has really come on. So, you know, with the addition of the two JUCO guys, uh, Moran and, and Branch, as well as uh, the move of Marcus Minor to the inside and Spencer Anderson's development, uh, we have a healthy TJ Bradley uh, that gives us a, a lot of, uh, gives us a little more depth than what we had last season and where we had what I had called cluster injuries on the O-line. We lost two, three guys in the position group, and the goal is to try to keep some guys healthy and let them continue to develop. And also, Coach, uh, your recent uh, foray into being a TV star with the uh, Washington football team's uh, pregame show that I guess they've had you on as an analyst. Uh, if you could just go into how much fun that's been for you. Uh, I wouldn't say it's been fun because it's added another thing to my plate, but – when we were unsure about football, um, we know the importance of uh, keeping our brand, the Maryland brand, out there in the forefront of uh, recruits' minds, especially here locally. Um, so it gives us the exposure to show the relationships that we have as a program uh, with, you know, the NFL programs that are within our region here. So um, really, uh, really happy that uh, NBC Sports Washington asked me to come on and do it. It's been a great experience, but I'm happy to get back to the football piece of coaching and developing the Maryland football brand as uh, we continue to move forward. Thanks again, Coach. Yep. We'll go to Cordell Woodland next. Hey, what's going on, Coach? Hey, Cordell. Um, not much. Uh, so I know it's been a difficult transition coming from last year and the uncertainty of even having a season this year and now on top of that you're having to basically jump right in and go right into a uh, conference play has there been a have you found that found that it's a challenging uh or difference in how you've been preparing the team to start the season knowing that now starting the season means you're going straight to big 10 football yeah you know it, it really isn't that much difference because whether the opponent is a non-conference or a conference opponent you know we've really really worked on re worrying about just what Maryland does. And so the challenge will always be about having us and having Maryland ready to play. Um, one of the benefits of starting late is that we've gotten to spend quite a bit of time on the football intelligence piece that I've hit on, on numerous occasions with all the time that we've had with our players from a mental standpoint. And we're really starting to see some of the fruits of that labor. And when we practice, I don't see a lot of missed assignments or blown assignments in any of the three phases and that's a good piece but the part that we've lacked on is obviously the time on field the, the physicalness that comes along with how you have to practice to develop the physical toughness that I want us to play with from a, a football culture standpoint and so what we're doing again I'm, I'm relying on the science piece of it the sports science stuff uh, to make sure that we get enough what I call banging and physicalness while also allowing our players to recover and I think there are probably if there has been any challenges, it isn't, you know, getting ready for a conference opponent because we get to do that as opposed to not having that opportunity, which we faced a few weeks back. Uh, the, the biggest challenge has been just making sure that um, as we prepare to play a season without a break in between, that we get the, the players to the games healthy as well as with the uncertainty of COVID and all the things that come with it as we found uh, how it's taken – place throughout the country uh, playing games and the postponements is being able to develop your team, as I said, from one to 110, because you never know when you're going to use your number 110 player uh, because of what COVID brings to the table or brings to the equation. We'll go back to Emily here. Emily. Um, hi, we, we just talked to Cortez and it, it sounds like he's really embraced a, a bigger leadership role even still as a fairly young guy. I was just curious what you've seen from him in terms of growth um, from his freshman year to now his sophomore year. 
Well, you know, obviously we, we identified uh, him as a, 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 one of those guys that had the leadership in him at an early age because, you know, as I told you, we have a leadership council on our team here. And Cordell, uh, Cortez has been a member of it uh, from the time he stepped on campus. He was one of the first freshmen uh, we put on that leadership council because of him. One, not being afraid to voice his opinion and, and also with how he does and goes about the way he practices and prepares. So um, we've identified guys very early in those roles and he was one of them. And um, as, as we found, he continues to grow in that role. And I think it's not as, mo as much as what he says, but how he goes about his business and the way he plays the game uh, we always talk about leadership is uh, having a positive impact on others. And he's one of those people that has that positive impact on his teammates. And we identify that earlier and are really happy with the way he's developed in our, in that leadership role for us as a program. We'll go to Jacob Steinberg here. Hey coach, appreciate you joining us. And you talked about it earlier, obviously, it's very unconventional with how long the guys haven't been in pads. So now that everyone's back in pads, I'm curious how you and your staff are going to balance em emphasizing the importance of, the fu of fundamentals, but also starting to game plan for Northwestern as well. Yeah, you know, we, we started pads yesterday. And, and in our mind, we're still in our install mode that we would normally be in during training camp. You know, we have a plan set forth uh, as to when we'll start on the Northwestern preparation. You know, as a coaching staff, uh, we've done preliminary scouting reports uh, from back in the summer on all of our opponents that we had on our, on our schedule. And Northwestern obviously was one that was on our schedule. So a lot of the preliminary scouting report stuff was done uh, this summer in our off season. Um, so we spent some time on that as a staff. Uh, but what we've done here since we've been in pads and practicing, uh, we'll continue to do the install to make sure we get the game, uh, the, the schemes and things in place that we need for the different situations that come up. And then we've allotted about a 10 to 11 day window of preparation for Northwestern. Being the first game, you know, in a couple of weeks, we'll start our Northwestern prep, which uh, typically will be about 10 or 11 days prior to playing them where we get some extra work to make sure that that game plan is uh, really tight and, and really uh, the ability to really to go out and execute it. Thanks, Coach. Yep. All right. Thank you.